Sponsorem audycji jest Związek Artystów Wykonawców Stoart. Stoart, przyjaciel artystów.
Sponsorem audycji jest Związek Artystów Wykonawców Stoart. Stoart, przyjaciel artystów.
Good evening, everyone. A warm welcome from uh, our studio located in a beautiful Krikoteka Museum in a beautiful town of Krakow. My name is Piotr Metz. I'm basically just a music fan, as all of us are, and I hope that's the main reason that we're going to spend the next three days together. Welcome to the fourth edition of the Zbigniew Seifert competition. Hopefully the first and the last edition during the uh, Pandemia nickname. Over the next three days, we'll host online 14 musicians from 11 countries and several time zones. Tonight we'll have six violins and only one lonely cello. The participants will be judged by our esteemed jury and for the first time ever by a, by a separate journalist panel for their award. And as usual, by everybody who'll join us online on www.cyphercompetition.com. They can vote for the audience award. We'd like to thank you, our patrons and sponsors, and everybody involved in making this competition happen, especially in these troubled times. And finally, I'd like to say that even if it's hard to believe that Zbigniew Seifert is no longer with us for four decades, his name is still more than alive in the jazz world. Its competition, its attendance and its artistic merit proves that beyond any doubt. A word about the quite important thing, the awards. A new one, Journalist Award, 1000 euro and a special bonus by reviews. An audience award, a concert performance sponsored by the Zbigniew Seifert Foundation. Special bonus awards for the most active audience participants. Uh, some of them are here on the table. I'm not parting with this album, mind you. SAWP Award, Association of Performance of Music and Music with Lyrics, 1000 euro, and a concert founded by Krzysztof Penderecki European Music Center in Luslavice. Third award, 2000 euros. Second award, 5,000 euros. And the first award of 10,000 euros. Now let's meet our esteemed judges covering the whole spectrum. Mr. Ernst Reisiger, master of the cello. Mr. Michal Rubaniak, master of the violin. Mr. Miroslav Bitos, master of the double bass. And the journalists, Ian Patterson, representing all about jazz uh, from the very beginning, involved in this big deciphered competition. Pavel Brodowski, editor in chief of the longest running jazz magazine in print, yes, ladies and gentlemen, in print, real print, for over 50 years. And Ivan, representing Citizen Jazz magazine. In my opinion, that's probably the best sounding brand name in the industry. Mary James from London Jazz Magazine, weekly jazz newsletter covering the fantastic London jazz scene. And Martin Laurentius representing German jazz magazine Just Think. Martin is currently being in a no zoom zone, uh, perhaps hiding somewhere in the jungle. Like you, Martin, but will be in touch. Say hi to everybody. Are Hi you there? Everyone. Everyone. Yes, we are. Nice to meet you. Sorry we're online, but it's better than nothing. We'll get back to you uh, soon, because now we have quite an event nowadays, a live guest in the studio. Robert Piaskowski. President of Krakow's Plenipotentiary for Culture, a man of many talents, one of them being uh, recognizing a good idea and helping it happen. <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful presentation. Thank you for this. W welcome, good evening uh, to everyone. F thank you for having me here tonight. We have, uh, we're still leaking once, the, the music uh, world is still leaking once from the pandemia situation uh, still maybe Krakow is the place when think like Zbigniew Zeffert competition 
will happen and will happen anyway. We just go ahead with it. Uh, is that a secret of this town being so musical? I think this is about the creativity of our inhabitants and our uh, partners, uh, promoters. They they were quite. Uh, rapid and and quite uh, efficient in uh, switching from uh, offline world to online world, and it was really at the very beginning quite frustrating to see all of the festivals and concerts and events cancelled, and then in two three weeks, all of the musical world, all of the festivals and competitions organizers, they started to prepare hybrid versions of all of the events, uh, just to move to online. And results are stunning. It's unbelievable when you see that, for example, film music festival was reaching 700,000 people online, or uh, early music festival has reached uh, 400,000 people in all of the continents, and or film Krakow Film Festival. Uh, just reached double audiences in ticket sale uh, online. So I think it's an amazing time where we discover how we can connect uh, together, how we can also experience uh, being together regardless limits, uh, borders, uh, closure of, of the airports and, and what is the most uh, important and difficult to all of the festivals or contest organizers, uh, mobility, which is limited or even impossible in the pandemia time. And I'm really happy and very proud of uh, Seifert competition organizers that they, uh, they, they really take this effort and, and they even reach the bar higher. Uh, showing that uh, there is no limits if there is a wonderful idea how to continue, how to celebrate jazz, how to to foster the idea of Seifert legacy and heritage. And as I see, there is a beautiful response from all over the world. And thank you for jury members. Uh, they they decided to to join us tonight and and. Uh, to you, Piotr, to, to host this um, uh, year's edition, and especially to all of the managers and promoters from Seifert uh, Foundation to make this uh, idea happen. As I understand, you were involved with this competition from the uh, day one, from the very beginning. Uh, it was uh, obvious, but still, uh, we had to wait to discover him again, mm -hmm. and now he's so important. Uh, I remember him being involved very much with a Krakow scene at one moment. So this is Krakow's legacy as well. Mm -hmm. It's world just legacy, but it's Krakow's legacy as well. Yeah, that's the wonderful uh, phenomena of Krakow, that we have such a plethora of, of uh, jazz phenomena in, in the past and also now. I'm saying about the new emerging talents uh, discovered every, every year here in Krakow, here at this contest, but also during Jazz Juniors or uh, Autumn Jazz Festival or Summer Jazz Festival or Jarosław Śmietana contest. Uh, another uh, contest in jazz we do organize uh, every two years. And that's wonderful to to continue with the great traditions of jazz music clubs in Krakow, for example. Harry's Jazz Club here and the Market Square is regarded as one of the best uh, in 10 in the in the uh, rank uh, by Guardian and also there is so many great spaces for for uh, jazz music including uh, Alhemia uh, in Jewish district or Uluisa or Piazart and it's also it's always connected with some faces of jazz, with some of the patrons of jazz, with some of the uh, great uh, stars of Polish jazz. Uh, to me, uh, personally, that was such a beautiful beginning of Zeifert competition, because I remember Aneta Norek, the chair of the foundation, when she graduated at the Academy of Music with a with a dissertation about uh, Zbigniew Seifert and then Councillor of the city of Krakow, Mogorzata Jantos, who just uh, was uh, her uh, 
how can I say, big supporter, but also uh, lobbyist in within city, just to to bring uh, Zeifert concerts and 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 it was not a contest at the very beginning, as an idea. It was just to create some of the concerts at the beginning. And Zeifert has joined so many great people uh, together. Mm, Aneta uh, and and uh, around all, all all the young generation of managers, they they did believe that Seifert is a beautiful pillar and and starting point for something very important to develop uh, the platform where emerging talents from all of the corners of the world can re can meet but also to make uh, more popular and more obvious that violin instruments uh, for jazz is a, such a beautiful sound and such a beautiful uh, tradition of, of jazz. Uh, and, and Seifert is a great figure to promote this, this instrument in, in jazz. And we have uh, first effects because all of the artists, they won the context, uh, contest uh, in previous editions, they are just great musicians and they are promoted by the foundation. They are promoted uh, throughout all of the festivals of jazz in Krakow. We have actually eight jazz festivals here in Krakow. So it's, it's a jazz city. <laughs> Probably Simply. the best legacy for any musician is that his music is still alive and uh, being discovered again and again by young talents. And I think the secret of Krakow is that uh, keep the tradition, but never give up. If there is a difficult situation like now, just involve in this tradition mm -hmm. the latest technology and go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Robert Daskowski, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll get back to our judges in a second. I'd like to start with uh, Mr. Arjen Patterson. You are involved uh, from the very beginning, from day one, with this uh, competition. And I remember you uh, writing a very enthusiastic review and very in-depth review of the first one. What are your memories from, uh, that was six years ago, I think. Six years ago, well, the memories are, are all good. Um, I was impressed, first of all, with the location, you know, the, the Penderecki Center is an, an incredible venue, not just for this competition, but year round. It's a, it's a spectacular venue. It's incredibly peaceful as well. Just the setting in the middle of the Polish countryside, you know, next three miles from, from or a couple of miles from a small village, a very typically Polish village. It's a very, um, I think it's a, a great location for musicians to come together and, and make music so restful. Um, the thing that really struck me most, apart from the incredible quality of, of the music from all the, all the violinists in that first edition, was the camaraderie amongst them, which I think is a feature of, has been a feature of all the competitions. The, it doesn't feel like a competition in the sense that all the musicians socialize together, eat together, as do the judges and journalists. And there's a very, very relaxed and, and friendly atmosphere. And uh, the evenings are, are great fun as well. And it's, that's the atmosphere um, that makes it such a, a wonderful few days. Maybe that camaraderie is something that we're gonna lack uh, this year, uh, especially eating together is no longer possible, but just let's hope it's one year and we'll be back uh, back to the old tradition soon. Um, a question to uh, all four of you. Uh, what are you expecting for such a competition and what are your criteria for uh, judging the performance? Probably it should be uh, just the performance uh, uh, here and now, uh, this one performance that they do in a competition situation. Uh, maybe we'll start with Mr. Uh, Reisberger. Hello, Ernst. Uh, Ernst, you want, you want a reaction on on the 
what do what do you expect from uh, such a competition when you're uh, a judge and do you think the criteria should be uh, just the spur of the moment performance in the evening uh, under the pressure of the competition no not really i'd like to try to imagine uh, 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 by listening and in this case still watching musicians perform uh, um, uh, all kinds of situations not only the pressure of the moment i like to involve also uh, uh, um, what kind of yeah i'd like to be impressed by uh, what this person might bring along as well uh, to 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 the to the occasion of the competition the same question mr vitos uh, do you think we you should judge by just the spur of the moment performance but, or you should try to reach deeper and uh, visualize the uh, possibility rather than the actual here and now performance I think you can only judge by what you see and hear. There's nothing else you can see or hear. So, you know, it's pretty clear what's there. <laughs> I just I just hope the participants uh, uh, do not hear us because they will be too nervous. Michał Urbaniak, what's your opinion on this, judging the performances? Well, I'd like to hear and see jazz artists in action and i know the better or weaker days but you can feel uh, anytime uh, what what the artist has to say and what is he's all, all about so in general so i Music. just ho i just hope that this feeling that you mentioned uh will travel even online even if we don't uh, have the artists in person they can somehow transmit it to us uh okay let's get back to work we'll have our first performance soon and uh, the judges are ready thank you gentlemen Our first uh, performer is John Pierce from UK, uh, town of Bristol. Uh, very accomplished, uh, based in classical music as well as jazz. Uh, John, if you hear if you hear me after your performance, would like to discuss uh, your performance with you before the judges will have their word. Uh, of course, if you're not too nervous. John Pierce representing UK.
John Pierce, our first competitor, finishing with Hand Sucker Rose by Fats Waller, played live uh, for all uh, people watching us online uh, in the uh, right uh, corner uh, on the screen. You see if it's a recorded performance, recorded uh, earlier, or a live performance. Uh, we just want to be on the safe side. But, John, if you hear me, uh, listen listening to you live was a completely different experience from uh, listening to and uh, watching the recorded piece. That's obvious. Thank you for uh, this live performance because we could actually touch and feel the music. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it was a real challenge and it's been absolutely wonderful being challenged in so many ways. Uh, I love Joe Pass and Martin Taylor and uh, taking a standard and trying to experiment, trying to explore, um, finding my voice in it is uh, it's a worthy pursuit and, and, and music in its, in its very nature um, can really just enrich and, and as a musician, you know, I'm constantly developing and learning, so it's, it's been a, a great opportunity for all of that. Can you tell us when you discovered Seifert's music? I discovered Seifert's music when my mum and dad bought me a cassette tape of jazz violinists, which featured Joe Venuti, Stefan Grappelli, and Seifert, John Luc Ponty, and uh, Seifert uh, well, I first listened to him when I was perhaps 11 or 12. Okay. That was my first experience of him. And the, the track was Stillness. And, uh, yeah, it was a fantastic cassette tape. I, I enjoyed it so much. Are you still uh, dividing your love of music uh, between classical and jazz? I am. I would say uh, for the last decade really I've been performing more jazz than anything else although I still do give concertos so um, Beethoven concerto and Brahms and I was all set to perform Sibelius uh, this March but because of COVID-19 it really wasn't possible so the obvious uh, question is how do you cope with what's happening around us well with difficulty and uh, we can but hope that things will change and and try and forge ahead as positively as we can. And that's what this year's competition is all about. John Pierce, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Once again, for all of, of, all of you watching us online, uh, there is a mixed performance, usually live, 
and before that recorded, but there will be some only live appearances later on. Now let's move to our second competition, Yoon Ro. Yoon, if you're ready. Thank you. 
think with a live John Coltrane piece, uh, I'd like to add that the applause is not simply a sound effect file. It's not our style. It's a real sample for the real audience reaction on the 2018 Seifert competition, the gala concert with John Scofield, John Bendeski, and the conglomerate big band. Uh, Yun, could you tell us your Seifert story, meeting his music? Um, it has uh, just um, a song uh, in my art disc called Song for Christopher. It's a really beautiful melody that uh, used to remind me um, the music, the tra traditional music in which I have been raised in. And I used to love that melody. And at the time, it has no name on the file. <laughs> so I did not know uh, which violinist it, it was. And I knew a couple of years after that it was Big Nears, I felt. And so I discovered his music and his uh, powerful music and beautiful sound. Coltrane must be still your uh, big inspiration if you uh, have chosen to play his piece live to finish your performance tonight. Of course, who does not listen to Coltrane? Of course, um, personally, I like to just the language by itself and I'm trying to treat this kind of language by adapting my instrument to that kind of language and afterwards it's a kind of goal to reach the might, the powerful of containing Zyphert someday or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's uh, by the language and in, by aesthetically also I would say. I must say that it's a unique experience, uh, such a such live performance as you've just did for us, because we could uh, hear the ambience of the room, of the small room. It was really mm -hmm. like touching your music and being with you. Uh, it's completely different uh, feeling from like a concert hall. Uh, maybe it's uh, the sign of the times. Uh, by the way, how do you cope with those difficult moments now? Um, I'm taking the advantage to, to refocus on what I'm trying to say and so the competition has been a perfect timing for it so I'm grateful for it and nobody knows where we are going <laughs> together but um, personally I'm, I have the chance to focus on music and to think about it and to take it seriously so thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> Thank you for being with us tonight and to remember such uh, small room performances uh, has got its merits. It's really very intimate. It was. Um, it's, an honor, it's an honor to be there. Thank you again and good luck to all. <laughs> Thank you. See you again. And here we have uh, our next performance uh, representing Poronin in Poland, in the Tatra Mountains, David Czernik.
Another piece of real applause. David Czernik representing Poland. First a recorded jazz concerto by Zbigniew Seifert and then live two pieces. El Ciego by Charlie Hayden and Moments Notice by John Coltrane. Uh, Davidzie, chciałbym Cię poprosić o powiedzenie nam dwóch rzeczy. Po pierwsze, jakie było Twoje spotkanie z muzyką Zbigniewa Seiferta? A po drugie, czy mógłbyś nam powiedzieć dwa słowa o swoim nauczycielu Tadeuszu Szostaku, czyli Berdzie? To może zacznę od y, pana Szostaka. Y, ten pan już nie żyje, to był dla mnie bliski człowiek. Y, od niego zacząłem moją przygodę z muzyką. Y, to był człowiek, co żył z muzyką etniczną. Y, tylko niestety żył... Y, Trzy lata, ja go tylko poznałem trzy lata, i, ale on mi jakby, od niego zapoczątkowałem moją, moją przygodę z muzyką i ona wpłynęła mocno na, na to, co się dzieje, dzieje w tej chwili. I tyle, tyle mogę o nim powiedzieć. A na kolejne pytanie, skąd, gdzie słyszałem pana Zajferta, też nie żyjącego, no to poznałem go na studiach, na Akademii Muzycznej. Nie osobiście, tylko jego muzykę słuchało się w klubach, nie, nie w klubach, płyty koledzy mi puszczali. Później właśnie zobaczyłem, jak już byłem na studiach, pierwszą edycję Zbigniewa Zajferta. No i zacząłem w tym kierunku, w tym kierunku powolutku się przygotowywać. Chciałem, chciałem właśnie tu kiedyś stanąć. Tak się udało. 
No i się udało. Dawid Czernik opowiedział nam o swoim pierwszym nauczycielu. Uh, the questions were about his first teacher, uh, a legend of um, Polish mountains folk music, uh, Tadeusz Szostak. Uh, David met him, unfortunately, three years before he passed away, uh, but he still thinks that he was the main influence uh, on him as a musician, and he uh, basically have has made him what he is today. About uh, his third, uh, first meeting with speaking of Zyphus music, David says it was during the studying at the Academy of Music. Uh, basically, it was uh, listening to albums uh, uh, lent by friends and slowly discovering that uh, Zbigniew Zeifert uh, probably is going to be as big influence as uh, any other musician. Uh, Dawidzie, bardzo ci dziękujemy. And now we're moving to London, England. Dominic, are you there? Yes. Hello, Dominic. Hi. Hi, you ready? Yes. Okay, from uh, London, England, Dominic Igem, he's gonna play our first uh, title title track from his uh, still fresh off the press new album, uh, I believe released in May, right? Role Models. Uh, then his... Um, uh, it's, it's not the title track that I'm playing just now. Okay. Uh, uh, then his uh, two pieces, PJs and Fail, and finishing with... Uh, Zbigniew Zeifert Choral. Uh, Dominik, I must say, you get my own personal uh, award for insisting on playing only live. It's going to be a bottle of wine of your choice. All right, thank you. Well, I have, I have backing tracks, so maybe that's not okay. as it helped, but... The, stage, you, the oh. stage is yours. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
Dominique Ingen of London, England, playing uh, three of his own compositions and one piece by Zbigniew Seifert. Dominique, we ask every participant about his personal journey with uh, discovering uh, Seifert's music. What's your story? Um, I was first given his name by a, a bass player called Steve Berry, um, who I was taught by at Cheatham School of Music in Manchester. Okay. Uh, and then I went up to listen to uh, his album with Jack Dejanet, uh John Schofield, um, Passion. Uh, is that the full name? Passion. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I'm terrible with that album names, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that was interesting hearing the, uh, the orchestral side of things as well, and the fact that he'd arranged it himself, which is crazy. Um, yeah, and playing with some of my already favorite musicians at that point. Releasing your debut album uh, is probably a big step. Is that your way of fighting the COVID situation? Uh, well, it was, it was already, uh, everything was already planned. Um, so uh, I guess not, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I've started to, to write for uh, the next one already. Um, so yeah, maybe that, that was my way of fighting the COVID war um yeah dominique thank you very much and best of luck thanks cheers and uh, we have two violins and one cello left tonight now we're gonna take a 15 minutes break and then we'll move to portugal
Welcome back. Today we have the first day of the fourth edition of Zbigniew Zypher competition and three participant left. First we move to Barcelona. Uh, Joao Silva, uh, representing Portugal, now based in Barcelona, will play uh, totally live, uh, which gives you uh, my next uh, private award for uh, insisting on playing live. He will start with uh, Zbigniew Seifert, Man of the Light, and then uh, will play two of his own compositions, Saudade uh, and Voa Voa. Joao Silva, the stage is yours. Thank you.
An applause originally directed for John Medeski and John Scofield two years ago at the Cypher uh, competition. Now for Joao Silva. Uh, a 100% live performance of Men of the Light uh, from Seifert and then two of his own pieces, Saudade and Voa Voa, uh, in the second piece of music. He was joined by Margarita Abita. Uh, Joao, uh, tell us your personal story about uh, your discovery of Seifert's music. Seifert's music I discovered um, in the University of Music here in Barcelona, where I came to to study. And by my teacher, by my my partners in the school, the other students. And when I came here, I didn't know almost anything about jazz musician. And this one was one of the one they told me to to listen to. And I started to be passionate with his music and with his language. So Zbigniew Seifert is the most popular jazz musician at the University of Music in Barcelona. That's nice <laughs> to hear. <laughs> That's nice to hear. Uh, how do you cope with the COVID and the general situation? Um, the COVID here, it's... Uh, I mean, in general, it's a very difficult moment now. And we'll now the streaming concerts and all the things about the streaming, it's. I think that they came to arrive and to stay for, for all the time. This we had this before, but now that we don't have time to and we have to go outside, just see the concerts at home, like these competitions. But I prefer the live audience, <laughs> the live concert, with uh, real people. But we must we must tell you that this was a really intimate private performance for us uh something quite unique that you couldn't do in a big concert hall if that gives yeah. you some you know hope best of luck <laughs> thank you for joining us tonight joao silva representing portugal now based in barcelona thank you thank you thank you very much and we are now moving to new york Omer Ashamo, representing Israel, now based in New York, will perform uh, two of his own compositions, Go Find a Place of Peace and Pnima, finishing with a live version of Zbigniew Seifert's Chinatown.
Applause, 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 two years old, <laughs> applause, for uh, Omer Ashano uh, performing uh, his two own compositions, Go Find a Place of Peace and Pnima, and then uh, performing solo live Chinatown by Zbigniew Seifert. Uh, Omer, where are you now, Israel or New York? Israel, with Israel. my family in Israel. Okay, yes. escaping the <laughs> virus. Totally. I, um, in a little before the beginning of March, I had all my tours and all my shows <laughs> canceling one, one by the other. Um, and I was planning a, a visit to Israel um, anyway, but I pushed it back in a month because I was afraid that um, things are going to get worse in New York and that they're going to cancel the flight and I won't be able to come back to Israel. So I just ran away a month earlier than expected. So that was the right decision, but tell us, uh, where uh, did you discover Zyfert, New York or Israel? So actually, I, I discovered um, Zbigniew um, in Israel before I moved to New York. It, I actually discovered Zbigniew thanks to the competition. Um, I, I found about the competition and then I, you know, I found a Seifert competition for jazz violin and I was wondering who's this big new Seifert. Um, and, um, and yeah, I checked him out and he blew my mind. Uh, and th there aren't, th there, there isn't a lot of awareness to jazz violin in Israel as you could imagine. Um, so, so every discovery of a new jazz violinist for me was always like, in <laughs> very exciting and very rare. I see. Uh, so probably it's a difficult question, but what's up next for you musically? Um, I, hope, I hope to use this time to, to create more music and hopefully record another album. Um, we're all stuck at home and it's gonna take a while for the music industry to recover from this um, after we're all done with this pandemic and we still don't know when that is. Um, and I figured that it's, it's, it's my time to, um, to dive deeper into myself and use this time for, for creation and not, you know, try to embrace the situation and work with it uh, rather than trying to find a way around it. We keep our finger crossed for you. Uh, Omer you. Ashamo, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Dziękuję. And now I think we are going to the United States. We are moving to the United States with the last participant for tonight. Greg Byers will perform a medley of Zyfert's Kilimanjaro and Pinocchio and then his own pieces, Springing It Back and uh, Duke Ellington's Sound of Love, Charles Mingus. Uh, Greg Byers, USA.
A medley of Zyphert's Kilimanjaro and Pinocchio springing it back, his own piece, and Charles Mingus' Duke Ellington Sound of Love. That was Greg Byers, the last piece performed live. Uh, Greg, you're my personal hero because you were on my favorite music show of all time later with Jules Holland. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we We can't hear you, I think. I'm afraid we can't hear you. There's something with the sound. Not yet. Any better? Yeah, yeah. Working, working. Okay, we'll just use this mic. That's fine. Yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Fantastic. So what's your personal story about meeting uh, the music of Seifert? Sure. Uh, you know, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I did not learn about um, his music until um, later on. Actually, I have several friends that participated in the first version of this competition. Tomoko Omura and Jason Anik, both are close friends. And through this competition, actually, was really how I learned about his music. Um, but immediately, as soon as I um, heard um, one of his pieces, I think it was City of Light, immediately I understood that connection that a lot of people today have been talking about, uh, the John Coltrane, Svignu Seyfert connection. And to me is that not only do they have an incredibly personal sound, but they very much are the spirit of the thing. And so I feel when they're creating, they're just a conduit for music to come through. And it's, it's very powerful. So uh, I've been inspired very much by these competitions and, and his music for the past several years. I have to ask you for this. Uh, did you really learn cello at two and a half years old? <laughs> you know, I would not believe it myself if there was not photo evidence and there's photo proof. So there's a, a very young Greg, uh, three years old with, with almost a viola sized cello. So, uh, but I don't remember not playing cello. I've played cello my whole life and, um, I'm very grateful to have made this into an occupation and a career and to be able to do something I love and share music with people. We would like to see the proof on the next occasion, a photo proof. It, if I point. make it to the finals, I will dig that photo up for you. How's that sound? It's a deal. Greg, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, thank you very social, much for having me. A, a social distance handshake. By social the way, distance handshake. <laughs> yeah. How do you cope with the COVID? Well, I'm lucky that I happen to live in a city in America that took uh, COVID very seriously from the beginning. And so we are doing relatively well. However, it is more the social justice issues here in Minneapolis that have been very challenging for the community as a whole. And so I'm very glad you asked me because I really would like to say here uh, black lives matter, black artists matter, and jazz as a music form would be nowhere without great black men, uh, black women artists. Um, and so that's really been the biggest thing here, um, uh, being in Minneapolis, being so close to where George Floyd was murdered by the police, it has been very palpable in the city for the past month. So honestly, having this music um, to help me create and to help me process my own feelings through this has been extremely helpful. Greg, thank you again for joining us. All the best. You're so welcome. Greg był ostatnim uczestnikiem pierwszego dnia czwartej edycji uh, Zbigniew Zeffert Competition. Uh, Greg was the last participant uh, on the first day of the fourth edition of Zbigniew Zeffert Competition. Uh, before him, we have heard John Pierce from the UK, uh, Yun Rowe from France, uh, David Czernik from Poland, Dominic Ingham from the UK playing live, uh, Joao Silva from Portugal also playing live, Omer Ashamo from Israel, and Greg we've uh, just heard. Uh, I'd like you to remind. I'd like to remind you that the judges this year are. Mr. Ernst Reisiger, Mr. Michal Urbaniak, Mr. Miroslav Vitoš. We also have a new award uh, given by journalists. It's a thousand euro and the panel uh, consists of 
Ian Patterson from All About Jazz, Paweł Brodowski from Jazz Forum, and Ivan representing Citizen Jazz uh, Magazine, Mary James from London Jazz Magazine, in, and Martin Laurentius from German magazine Just Just Think. Uh, the awards this year, uh, apart from the Journalist Award, are the Audience Award, which is a concert performance sponsored by the Zbigniew Zeifert Foundation, uh, Association of Performers of Music and Music with Lyrics Award, 1,000 euro in a concert founded by the Krzysztof Penderecki European Music Center in Luslavice, and third award, 2,000 euro, uh, second, 5,000 euros, and the first prize is 10,000 euros. Euros. Uh, we'll meet you again uh, tomorrow at the second day of the fourth edition of Zbigniew Zeifert International Jazz Violin Competition. Uh, we'll meet you at 8 p.m. Tonight we'll leave you with a, a concert by Bartek Dvorak. It's called Road to Victory and it's a memory from the first edition of the Zbigniew Zeifert competition in year 2014. Bartek Dvorak is joined by Paweł Kaczmarczyk on piano, Maciej Adamczak on bass and Patrick Dobosz on drums. We'll leave you with that. See you tomorrow. Thank you for today.
Thank you.